Welcome back to another episode of Tech TLDR. Today, I have a big update for you guys regarding the SN9 and its launch date. I also have more information regarding SpaceX's Starlink program and some good news for the company overall. So if you want to hear about that as well, be sure to stick to the whole episode. But let's get into the reason why you clicked on the video. So the SN9's launch update. So I have some bad news for you guys. As you guys know, yesterday, January 14th, the SN9 went through three or no, the day before that, I'm sorry, the static fire tests, SN9 went through three of them, which would have totaled up to its fourth in static fire tests. It's gone through four already. Systems look to be going well. It did three perfectly fine yesterday, but now apparently that isn't the case. So according from Elon Musk directly on Twitter, two of the engines of the SN9 need to be repaired. So they're going to be switched out. That is going to take a little bit of time for the SN9. So now we don't have an official launch date, but we know it's not going to be anytime soon. We go on the FAA's website. They actually do have space clearance for the 18th, the 19th, and the 20th. Personally, I don't think we're going to see it that quick. Maybe the 20th? I don't know. Now, if you guys follow Everyday Astronaut on Twitter, he also made a point that Something similar like this happened with the SN8. And when that happened with the SN8, it took weeks for them to be able to switch out the process. And that was with only one engine. So I don't know if we're going to see this anytime soon by the 20th, which is the latest date that they have this listed for. I think the 18th and 19th is just kind of a... You're, that's not even relevant at this point. I don't think we're going to see that. 20th maybe. We're probably going to see this getting pushed off even more and more though. At least we do have a reason, though, that it's not flying. There's been so much speculation as to why it's not, and at least Elon Musk himself has confirmed some information because SpaceX and Elon Musk have not talked anything about the SN9 recently. There's been so many random delays and postpones, and no one's had any clear info. So at least now we have some information from the man himself as to why we have not seen the flight yet. And if you don't remember, the whole point of this SN9 flight is to do the hop test and to land upright to test for future missions. So with those static fire tests, although they are successful, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if because they did four of them in total, if maybe debris caused some damage onto the engines themselves or something like that. I, I don't know. I'm really not sure. If you guys, let me know in the comments what you think, if you guys really have a better understanding of possibly what could have gone wrong i'd love to hear the different reasons but hopefully they can get this all resolved within the coming week because we've already been waiting in terms of delays a whole week now so i mean i don't want to see us wait the whole time like we had to do for sn8 the whole almost over three weeks i don't want to see us waiting another three weeks i want to see this sn9 do its belly flop do its landing stick the landing don't repeat the sn8's faults Another possibility, too, is the SN10 could come in. Depending on how long the SN9 needs to be repaired for, the SN10 also, I know, is pretty much ready to go. I mean, I believe it's built and has there's nothing wrong with it at this point because they're already working on the 11 and 12. I wouldn't be surprised if we see if the SN9's damage is going to take a long time and SpaceX really wants to get these tests out if they launch the SN10 before the SN9. I don't know if they would even do that. I mean, I, would, I think it'd be pretty cool. But anyway, if all you guys wanted to know is about the launch updates and things like that, that's all there is for that. So if you want to leave the video, I understand. Be sure to click the like button on your way out. But if you want to stick for more info regarding SpaceX, let's get into that. So SpaceX has now been officially cleared to use their Starlink program by the telecom service Ofcom in the United Kingdom. Now, Ofcom is kind of like their FCC, I guess you'd say. It's like a government regulator of telecommunication services and providers. So now that SpaceX has the okay from them, they can start testing, rolling out their program in the UK. So the whole point of the Starlink program is to bring internet, high-speed internet, into rural areas that do not currently have good broadband service providers. So right now, Starlink's program can provide anywhere from 50 megabits per second to 150. And the average speed in the UK in general is 64. So 
if it can get to the higher end, this thing at the lowest end is already almost to the average. So at its higher end, it completely blows the average speed out of the water. And they've already done testing in this in rural areas, and they've gotten speeds of 80 megabits per second download speeds at home. That's amazing. Imagine living out in the middle of the countryside in the UK. You probably have a 2G service that I mean, you don't even have that. You have uh, pigeons, messenger birds going back and forth. That's how you're getting your emails. Now you have 50, sorry, 80 megabits per second. Of course, people are going to switch to the Starlink, to the Saturn uh, satellite internet provider when you're getting amazing speeds like this. And the simplicity of it too, most dish networks, you have to attach a satellite dish to your house. Do you know how much of a process and a liability that is to have a satellite dish on your house? More than you would think. Now, all you need is this little box that you buy, you put it out in your backyard, and that's it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to mount anything in your house. You don't have to have someone go up on your roof. You don't have to screw with it when it's snowing out and clear the snow off. If you live in a snowy area like I do, you don't have to worry about that. It's just a little box that has a dish on it. If snow gets on it, you just go outside and you brush it off. It's You don't have to get on the roof anymore. So Starlink, I think, besides rural areas, I think so many people are going to switch to that, which is the next article I have, which is from PCMag.com. Apparently, according to their studies, about half of Americans are already ready to switch to the Starlink satellite internet provider. Now, personally, I have Comcast, and I hate Comcast. Their service is lackluster, to say the least. The prices are through the roof. Everything they have is an upseller and upcharge. I don't know about their internet throttling, things like that. I don't know about that. But I do know that, personally, I would... I would rather have Starlink. They have faster speeds on average than I get. Probably save me money in the long run. And I just don't like Comcast. I don't even I don't even want to work with them anymore. Even if it was the same price, the same service, the same speeds, I still want to go to Starlink. So although I don't know the pool of people that were selected for this provider, for this survey, I don't know about that. But I can agree that most people do want to switch. I've talked to people personally, and they say the same thing. They think this whole system is fantastic. And why it's so good for SpaceX as well, like I said in previous episodes, as Starlink gets bigger, as they gain more and more customers, that's essentially just a cash flowing business aspect for SpaceX themselves. I think Elon Musk was saying they want to do anywhere from 30 to $50 billion in annual revenue off of the Starlink program. So let's just say, even if they profit 10% off of that, right? Let's just say only 10% of it becomes profit. That's three to $5 billion every year that they can put immediately back into the Star Starship programs, the SN programs, getting us to the moon and getting us to Mars to further develop research and development projects. So by Starlink becoming so big and already having such a strong desire and a strong people want this thing, it's going to make SpaceX such a powerhouse and so hard for them to really lose in the space game. I mean, I can't imagine them at this point. It's almost like Tesla. You know, Tesla for so long, people thought it was going to go bust, it was going to go bankrupt. But now they're absolutely killing it. I think SpaceX is pretty much at that point. I think within the next year to two, after they've had successful SN launches, after the Starlink program is in full effect, because I know... By the end of this year, they're going to have a lot more satellites in orbit for this program. I mean, they're going to be they're going to be unstoppable. So that's all I have for you guys on this episode. Like I said before, if you like this content, by all means, click the like button, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to have a lot more com uh, content like this. And let me know if you guys have any more ideas in the comments and what you think of the channel. Anyway, that's all I have. Have a good one.